Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sigrid and I make videos about books because I love them. Today I'm going to be doing a small Barnes & Noble haul. Recently they had a pre-order sale and I spent $500 worth of pre-orders. I can't explain. I went overboard in the, the audacity of me saying that I don't even know of anything that I need right now and then going in and spending five, $500 is just insane. It's insane. I have no excuse. Please yell at me. But I, I looked up uh, some of like the upcoming books. I tried my best to support as many black authors and I tried to get as many of like sequels that I could. I just wanted to take advantage of like saving money on books that I know is coming out. Like you know so these are not all of them obviously but so they're going to be coming throughout the year. So expect to see like several haul videos of like smaller ones because I don't want to wait until like I have like all of the books because that would be forever. So I thought it would be best to just like show you guys as they, they come. So the first book I got is from Holly Jackson and this is actually a novella that's part of the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. It's one of my favorite thriller series out there and when I saw this I was like yes. It's actually pretty cheap. It was like $12.99 so I ended up spending um, not a lot. Um, I think the sale was like 30% off. I don't remember what the special was but it was pretty cool. So I really enjoyed the series. Um, let's see what it's about. Okay, so this book, I'm not sure exactly when it picks up, if it picks up after the third book or if it's like supposed to take place in between some of the books that I've already read. But this follows Pip, who is the main character in the original series, and she was invited to one of her friends' murder mystery party, and she's having to solve the case. So it's one of those like, uh, it's not really necessary to read, but it might be fun. I do like Holly Jackson's writing style, and so I'm excited to pick this one up. I just really love the cover. It looks like a plate that has blood and it's cracks. I don't know, it just, it does something for me. Next up is a book that I got because I just feel like it's so freaking beautiful. It's like pretty in like a horrible way though. Like it's like, it's a horror book, obviously, but it's still pretty. I don't understand, like look at that. I, I can't even, it looks like it might be a zombie book. I can't even say, like, I'm intrigued. I love this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this book is probably going to be a five-star read. It's, it, it, it goes there. So it follows two different characters and I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be two different timelines. So first up, it uh, follows a black girl named Daisy. She has the ability to see dead people. She, it pretty much keeps it under wraps like nobody really knows her secret but her boyfriend does break up with her so I don't know if it's because of that or something else but at the same time her mother inherits this like secluded probably haunted mansion and so to get away they decide to move in there. Something happens to Daisy because there is another character in this book named Brittany. She has a podcast and what she wants to do is to go to this mansion and investigate what the hell happened to Daisy. So Daisy must have disappeared or died or something which is like it's gonna sound crazy but I'm intrigued. I want to know what happened to Daisy. Like you can see dead people you didn't see this coming. Can she see herself? That's only if she's dead. I don't know. This sounds really cool. I can't wait. It's a thick book so I'm excited about it but yes. Then you guys, I haven't read the first books in this series. Like I haven't. But I just thought that it was so cool and it's so cute that it comes with multiple books. Like look, it's a set! But it was like the price of like a regular book, you know? So this is Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong. I believe I have the other books in this series but it's actually a set of two books. I'm gonna see how how it looks. Oh this is so cool, like look! Oh, and they're like, okay, it's painted. Oh, wow, look at that, you guys. And on the back it says, are we really going to do this? Are we are we going to risk it? And then this one says, now you know how I felt the first time I said I love you. This is so great. Okay, so this book is called This Foul Murder, and it's probably the title here, but we can't read it because it's in Chinese. But it's also on the spine as well. But This Foul Murder is this one yeah so there's three there's three books before this and i think i have them all it's these violent delights our violent ends and fall lady fortune 
okay so and these are really tiny like novellas so this is this one and then the other one we have is a foul thing this is so cool i just like that it's different okay anything that's different you have my money because i like it and then this is the slip case it came in like how cute is that okay so in this one this is a foul thing and it follows roma and juliet um they are someone that is kind of having like a secret lifestyle they're the underground weapons they're the heads of an underground weapons ring and they're trying their best to live like a peaceful life under wraps and they hear about this mystery of like several russian girls um being murdered in a nearby town and so they decide to investigate and they realize that what's happening is actually much closer to them than they ever thought it would be interesting okay so this foul murder follows benedict and marshall they're on their way to find the scientists and while they're on their train someone is murdered because that's what happened in thrillers someone is murdered and they can't really stop the train because they're trying to figure out who murder murdered this person and as they they're pretending to be investigators and they realize that this murder is connected to the case that they're currently trying to like solve which isn't that usually how it happens though it's always interconnected okay so next up we have another story so this one is called there goes the neighborhood by jade adia i loved this cover this is a thick book too like it has it has some some health to it some health it has some weight to it what am i talking about Okay, so this book follows a black girl named Rhea. She's in a neighborhood that she's always known as her home and it is in the process of being gentrified. This is one of those novels that really has a commentary on gentrification. She realizes that a lot of the mom and pop shops that she has like grown to love and know they're closing and they're replacing it with like hot yoga studios and kombucha stores like things like that and so she Oh, she has this weird crazy idea that she's going to use social media and pretend that there's gang activity in the neighborhood make people like fear that there's gang activity and leave the town something pop off because somebody ends up dead this is probably going to be a really tough book it's probably going to be really emotional to read definitely some triggers in here next up we have the london seance society by sarah pinner i actually have the book of the month edition of this as well but it's just so stunning that i don't want to i know i could send this back i know please don't comment it because it once you see it you're gonna be like no you can't send it back secret so first of all look at this cover stunning it's gold it is and then look I know like oh this is how the Barnes and Noble edition look and then look inside oh, really it's so stunning like oh, and it's on the back as well this is just as stunning like there's no way I can like return this okay so this is by the author of the lost apothecary so if you like that book you might like this that book was one of the historical fiction that actually got a five star rating from me like I really enjoy it and I did I normally don't like historical fiction so I had to jump at the chance with this it must be the writing style from the author so I had to get this one so this takes place in 1873 it follows this like well-known spiritualist person that can summon the dead so that they can tell like who murdered them and it's a person named lena wilkes who comes to paris to investigate her sister's death and she has to work with this spiritualist person but she doesn't really believe in it but she's willing to try whatever it takes to solve her sister's murder so they will actually start to work with this exclusive seance society that is like all men i believe in london so i'm excited to see how this goes this this is a toss-up i'm not sure if i'm gonna like it or not and finally we got my dear henry by kaylin Barron. I have several books by Kaylin Barron, but I have not read any of them. They sound so good. I've heard good things about it, but I also have heard not so good things about it. But this one really stood out to me, and I just, I had to. I had to. So this is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde retelling. I believe there is some um, LGBTQ representation in here as well. And it's, it's BIPOC. Come on. We have a black Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Isn't that freaking amazing and crazy okay i'm gonna read this one london 
1885, Gabriel Utterson, a 17-year-old law clerk, has returned to London for the first time his life and that of his dearest friend, Henry Jekyll was derailed by a scandal that led to his and Henry's expulsion from the London School of Medicine. Whispers about the true nature of Gabriel and Henry's relationship has followed the boys for two years, and now Gabriel has a chance to start again. But Gabriel doesn't want to move on, not without Henry. His friend has become distant and cold since the disastrous event of the year before, and now his letters have stopped altogether. Desperate to discover what's become of him, Gabriel takes to watching the Jekyll house. In doing so, Gabriel meets Hyde, a strangely familiar young man with white hair and a magnetic charisma. He claims to be friends with Henry and Gabriel can't help but begin to grow jealous at their apparent closeness, especially as Henry continues to act like Gabriel means nothing to him. But the secret behind Henry's apathy is only the first part of a deeper mystery that has begun the colis the Coles, monsters of all kind prowl within the London fog, and not all of them are out for blood. So I believe this is actually a YA thriller, by the way. So obviously, I'm pretty sure there's going to be trigger warnings for homophobia. It does take place in like 1883, so um, I would definitely keep that in mind. I don't want to speculate, but I feel like there might also be some like mental health representation in here but I mean I could just I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure like Dr. Hyde and Jekyll is like the same person right it's like bipolar I did receive this arc so I do want to mention it in this video so this is by Brianna Holt and it's called In Our Shoes on being a young black woman and not so post-racial America so this was really cool I love the color cover and if you guys can look at the art there she is stunning I am just so like, wow. So I think this is a memoir. I received a letter. We just got a letter. It's from Plume. Okay, so it says, thank you for accepting an early copy of Brianna Holt's new book, In Our Shoes, on being a young black woman in not so post-racial America. It comes out April 11th, 2023. This is a memoir of essays about young black women and the stereotypes and preconceived notions that are expected to live up to, examined through the lens of Brianna Holt's lived experience and pop culture to help readers unlearn their biases and expand their world views. Part memoir, part cultural critique, In Our Shoes will walk readers through the common stereotype and issues young black women have to overcome in modern America in order to dismantle myths about black womanhood and explore the roles black millennial women take, uh, take on to simply to survive. And nine thoughtful chapters laced with searing commentary, reportage, personal anecdote from Brianna's own life, as well as interviews conducted with everyday black women in Our Shoes hopes to illuminate readers on the complexity of existence for black women and create a digestible, thought-provoking book that will help readers to learn, empathize, reflect, and act. A personal history, a work of criticism, a piece of reporting, and a call to action, In Our Shoes is a timely exploration of race and womanhood that aims to entertain and inform. I hope you enjoy this thoughtful and necessary book. So I just, this is beautiful. I actually have to read this before it comes out so that I can do a review. But hopefully doing this video will also let you guys know that this book exists and it's coming out April 11th next month. So please get on it if that is something that you're interested in. Yeah, that is everything that I have so far as far as my haul from Barnes & Noble. I will be having some more soon. I'm pretty sure there are some that's on its way. So expect to see another haul video from me pretty soon. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.